probability of dependent events and conditional probability, we're at 13.3b. We have one previous video for this lesson. It was 13.3a, and we talked about independent probability. You can check the description for that video and for a link to the high school geometry playlist if you need it. Events are dependent if the occurrence of one event does affect the probability of the other. So as we discussed in the previous video, picking a card and replacing it into the deck, then picking another, is independent because we replaced the card so the deck was full again. But picking a card and not replacing it to the deck, then picking another, is dependent because there is one less card in the deck. So here we have our bag of gems again. There's two pink ones and a blue one in the bag. If we pick a gem from the bag, don't replace it into the bag before picking again, the probability will be different. The probability of the color we pick is dependent upon the previous outcome. If we pick a, gem, a pink one, we've got two out of three chances of getting a pink one, don't we? And we've got a one-third, one out of three chance of getting the blue one. So if we pick a pink one, out of the bag and we don't replace it. We keep it out here and then we pick again. Now the probability of picking pink again will be half because there's only two left in the bag. That is dependent upon what we picked the first time. So here's a tree diagram that shows the probabilities for choosing two gems from a bag containing two pinks and one blue. The first time we pick we've got two-thirds chance of getting a pink. We've got one-third chance of getting a blue one. If we pick this pink one, we now have a 50% chance or half probability of getting a pink because the one pink is already out, so now there's just a pink or a blue, isn't there? So now we've got a 50-50 chance of getting a pink or a blue. If we pick the blue, now the blue one's gone. There's two pinks left, see? Just these two pinks would be left, so we would have a 100% chance of getting a pink now because we took the blue one out, or we could say the probability is 1 because it's definitely, and we'd have a 0 probability of getting a blue one again because we took that one blue one out. See? The probability of a specific event can be found by multiplying the probabilities on the branches that make up the event. So the probability of picking two pink, pink gems, we pick a pink one and then we pick a pink one again, would be two-thirds times this one-half. Here's the two pink gems. So we multiply this branch by this branch up here. Two-thirds times one-half is two-sixths, so we've got a one-third probability of picking a pink gem and then picking a pink gem again. To find the probability of dependent events, we can use conditional probability. We've got the probability of B given that A has occurred. And see how it's separated here? That's the probability of B given that A has occurred. It can also be read as the probability of B such that A has occurred. So, for your notes, the probability of dependent events. If A and B are dependent events, then the probability of A and B is going to equal the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A has occurred. Where we can find the probability of dependent events a pair of dice are rolled. We have a pink one and a blue one. There's one pink, one blue. We can explain why the events are dependent and then find the indicated probability. So what's the probability the pink cube shows a 1 and the sum of the two cubes is less than 4? Well, if we look for a pink cube showing a 1, we have this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. There's six of them, aren't there? But the sum is less than 4, well, it would just be these two of the six. 
the probability of pink showing a 1 is 6 out of 36. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of these 36. We reduce that to 1, 6. The probability that the sum is less than 4, given that pink 1 has occurred, would be 2 of those 6, which would be 1 third. So out of six outcomes, we have a pink one, two of them have a sum less than four. But we need to show the pink cube shows a one and the sum is less than four. The events, the pink cube shows a one and the sum is less than four are dependent because the probability that the sum is less than 4 is different when it's known that a pink 1 has occurred. We have several of these outcomes where the sum is less than 4, even this one here, the 2 and the 1. But if a has to be that a pink 1 has occurred, well then this can't work, this, two, this pink 2 and this blue 1, because that's not a pink 1. The only way that it would work is where the Pink ones are a 1, and then the sum is less than 4, so it would be these two. We find the probability, we have the probability A and B, pink cube is 1 and sum is less than 4, and we multiply the probability of the pink cube times the probability that the sum is less than 4 given that pink 1 has occurred. So we've got the probability that there's a pink 1 and the sum is less than 4, and that's going to equal the probability of the pink 1, that's 1 6, that's 1 out of 6, because there's 36 here, and 6 of them had a pink 1, and 6 out of 36 simplified to 1 6, and the probability that the sum is less than 4, given that the pink 1 has occurred, is 1 third. It's 2 of these out of these 6, so that simplifies to 1 third. We multiply them together and we have 1 18th. That's our probability that we'll have a pink cube that shows a 1 and the sum is less than 4. We used multiplication. So we can determine why the events are dependent and then find the indicated probability. So what's the probability that the blue cube shows a multiple of 3 and the sum of the two cubes is 8? So the events are dependent because the probability that the sum is an 8, here we have a 6 and a 2, a 5 and a 3, a 4 and a 4, a 3 and a 5, and a 2 and a 6. So for all of these, the sum is an 8. But for the blue cube to be a multiple of 3, it would either be a 3 or a 6, and that the sum is an 8 would just be this one and this one. So it's dependent. The probability that the blue will be a multiple of 3 would be 2 out of 6. We have 6 columns here, and in 2 of the columns, the blue cube is a multiple of 3. That simplifies to 1 -third. The probability that the sum is 8, given that blue multiple th of 3 has occurred, would be 2 out of 12. So here we have 12 different rolls. Here's 6, and here's 6, so that's 12. And only 2 of those rolls would the sum be equal to 8, and that simplifies to 1 6. So what we do to find the probability that the blue would be a multiple of 3 and the sum is equal to 8, is we would multiply this times this. This 1 3rd times that 1 6th. We'd get 1 18th, which is 2 out of 36 possible outcomes. There's 36 possible outcomes here, and this one and this one, these two are the only two where the blue is a multiple of 3 and we have a sum of 8, and that simplifies to 1 18th. We're going to finish up the last two parts of this lesson, 13.3, with using a table to find conditional probability and determine whether events are independent or dependent. And I'm going to have a link to my Algebra 2 Chapter 15 playlist that 
talks about probability and multiplying probability and Pascal's triangle and binomial theorem and all of that stuff if you need it. So I hope to see you in the third part of this lesson, and we'll talk more about conditional probability. Have a great day. Bye.